Hey, this is Raise Radio, and today I want to talk about why you don't need willpower. Hey you, have you ever tried the willpower diet? It's a name I've given to clients who have tried this thing in the past. Dieting, calorie counting, but then failing and blaming it on their willpower. Well, what is willpower? It's simply obeying your rational mind, the part that understands things like long-term consequences and thoughts of right and wrong, over your drive for getting pleasure right now. Willpower is the power to make yourself behave a certain way, even though you don't want to. So the typical story about sticking to a diet is like this. The dieting is primarily an exercise in willpower, that you are constantly fighting against your desire for unhealthy but pleasurable foods, and it becomes this huge test of your moral strength. People who have willpower deserve praise for winning, and people who don't have willpower deserve shame for losing it. Let me share something with you. This typical story about dieting this way, every part of this theory and belief is wrong. First of all, willpower isn't some absolute quality that you have or don't have. It's simply a skill that you have either developed or not. Secondly, successfully avoiding junk food and choosing healthy food instead is hardly related to willpower. Thin people aren't thin because they have the iron self-discipline to only drink green smoothies. Nobody can do that. Maintaining a healthy and balanced lifestyle depends on much more than avoiding the need for willpower in the first place. When I created a long-term program to help my clients with this, avoiding the use of willpower was a driving force because everyone knows that diets don't work. Successful diets don't use willpower. Willpower is exhausting. Going through each day with this fight, this battle in our head causes a lot of anxiety. Stress depletes available brain power for the day leaving you with even less strength available to stick to a healthy food come dinner time. But it's not about the power. It's about your choice. So the big question is, how do people actually manage to stick to a diet? It's not because they're a rare and special breed. It's because they have learned how to avoid using willpower in the first place. You don't need to set yourself up for this kind of head-to-head confrontation between your willpower and surrounding temptations. To win the war, Avoid the battle altogether. So here's how to avoid relying on willpower and how to prevent the conflict in the first place. Number one, build habits. Making healthy behaviors habitual means you don't need to use up your willpower making the decision to do them. They'll come naturally because you know those choices feel good. If a morning walk is part of your daily routine, you don't have to expend energy deciding to go. You're just dressed and out the door automatically. Number two, get in tune with you. If it's not a daily habit of yours yet, meditation should be. It's an incredible tool to help you understand how your choices are affecting your body and to help you quickly get in tune with your experience of food. That way you are more in touch with the foods that make you feel good. And trust me, junk food is not one of them. People who meditate regularly have calmer, more focused running brains, and that gives us more space and energy for coping with the challenge of cooking healthy instead of feeling overwhelmed by it all. Number three. Eliminate thought barriers to healthy food. Barriers are walls we put up for ourselves that make life feel really difficult. For example, if all you believe is that you don't have time to cook and that takeout is the only option you have, that's a barrier or wall we've put up to eating healthy as our reality. It makes cooking more difficult simply because of the belief we hold. But it's not impossible, we just think it is. Common barriers I see regularly include not knowing what to cook, having other people in the house that influence what you can and can't eat, being too stressed or tired to deal with food, having too many cravings, and not enough proper kitchen tools or hating your kitchen. Number four, cook ahead. One night a week, cook double or triple what you normally would and store or freeze the extras in single serve containers. Then when you stumble home after a long day, you don't have to cook a big meal from scratch instead of ordering pizza. You've turned the healthy choice into the easy choice, avoiding the use of willpower altogether. Want to know the easiest way to food prep? I have a blog and podcast about that too. And finally, believe in yourself. You can do this. Eating more fruits and vegetables isn't brain surgery, and everyone knows now that whole foods are real and the way to go and processed foods are not good for healthy bodies. Trust yourself and the journey. Know that you have enough knowledge and the ability to choose and prepare healthy foods in advance. Just make it a priority. You're worth it. 
Your thoughts are powerful and simply believing you can do it is a big part of the issue for most of my clients. Your choices are bigger than you. You are changing the economy and local people's lives when you make healthier food choices. Break the chains that tie you to the war. Eating healthy isn't about building up willpower to dominate everything all at once. It takes mindfulness, the ability to want to change, and the skills and accountability and support to do so. I would love to help you with that if you're listening right now hands-free. I'm glad. But if you happen to be at your computer or on your phone, if you head to my website, losenutrition.ca, I have a free giveaway on the main page to make stress and overwhelm about food a thing of the past. And if you give me your email address, I will send you an amazing handout that gives you videos and handouts so that you can swiftly end the mind games and obsessing. You can learn how to pick food and stop agonizing whether or not you're doing it right. And you can end your nightly cravings to stop feeling out of control. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. You can find me online at www.reinadonlutz.com. 